Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Enigmatic 6. How are you guys doing today? How's life? We are starting today's episode by doing a teeny tiny bit of end exploration in the Amberlands. Because apparently according to the wiki, that is the only place where you can find Amber. We got 13. We also don't need a crazy amount, this should be more than enough. Yeah, one stack and 34. And therefore, we should be able to go home. Yes. Perfect. I have the void trinket. It teleports me back to my bed. I mean, if I fall into the void, obviously. I also found some nests and, well, we should be able to get silk from this. You can craft it. It does not have a horrible recipe, but, well, I found two. Oh, pillagers. I needed a raid. Hello. We have the bad omen. Perfect. Let us get geared up. And I have a feeling that if we stand next to this door, there should be a raid. I should have repaired my sword. You might notice that I'm not really worried about the raid because we're going to have some help. Shoot everyone. Good job. Ah, victory. We will get back to the totem of undying, which I just got and the amber later on for the moment. I do have a care package. I want to set up the storage system from occultism and for that we need to have a hellfire forge. Cause you know, we need a teeny tiny bit of demonic will. I have already prepared most of the ingredients so this should not take that long. There you go. Hellfire forge. This did not count. Oh, you need demonic will. Okay. That's something that I'm going to get anyways. The first time that you want to get some demonic will in blood magic, you have to make some rudimentary snares. The recipe for the snare has been changed slightly, but it's not that bad. <laughs> I wish it would show the progress bar. I'm guessing it's just 8 buckets. Who cares? Actually, in the meantime, we should craft some refined crimson. Oh, it's ready. Thank you. That was fast. You go and charge up. And I swear to you, every 2 minutes, it's night time. Oh, wait a minute, now that I'm hero of the village, uh, how much discount are we going to get? It's the same price. We need to work on you. Uh, the fact that it was night time would have been very useful, but in order to get some demonic will, we need to find an undead mob. Or actually, I think any mob. When they have particle effects, if we kill them, we get some demonic will. Both of them are nice. Well, we have more. Let's get more. You cannot also place some the Hellfire Forge in the overworld, but we need to make some tartaric gems. Again, the recipe has been changed, but it's not terrible. And we want to have two of them. For the moment. Eventually, when we want to get more demonic will, we need to make the sentient sword, but the recipe is not as easy as you would think. Yeah, it needs a lot of garbage. For the moment, we just need a bit. So we just drop you on the ground and pick you up. I need a minimum of 32. It is perfectly fine. Let me get it and I'll be right back. So yeah, there was a boss who would lock you in and then kill you. And these are his robes. But we have enough demonic will, meaning that all I have to do is basically this. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that is a lot of quests. Thank you. Well, this keeps getting fun. I was just stung to death. You're a boss. Yes. A bee with boots. Okay, so I have everything I need and then I was like, where the hell do I set it up? We might have a massive base, but you must remember that 90% of our base is essentially a corridor. So I thought maybe it is time to have a very small magical office over here, which is nothing super fancy, it's just a square, you know, there's nothing inside. And since I thought we are going to use it for Ars Nouveau, uh, we need to also get additional stuff. And just a very small disclaimer, in this episode, I'm not gonna do any actual work. I have grinded until now, I need to have some fun. Since we are going to get into spells very soon, we are going to need a scribe's table. There you go. Why did I make two? Okay, two is good. Would be symmetrical, I guess. We should probably make two of these summoning crystals. You know, just for decorations. And I also want to get a bookworm. I was going to say it does not have a horrible recipe, but then I saw a recipe for a book. You can't just craft books. I never knew. I never crafted a book. It is perfectly fine. We can have bookshelves. There you go. So let me do some crafting and I'll be right back. So the tablet of binding which we need in order to summon familiars requires a binding reagent. It does not have a horrible recipe but we need it for a bunch of stuff including the living armor which is something that we are going to get so I made as much as I can which is 15. If I remember correctly the way that we summon this guy is that we need a lectern and we sneak and right click. Are you summoned? Yes. So I need to bind him to myself therefore here is a ritual brazier and you should be bound. Oh, sneak right click. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So now if I use my spell book, there should be a tab for this guy. And we can summon you. Hello. Don't be jealous, Cubby. 
he's going to help me with spells. So let us get back to the main task at hand, which is the inventory management system from Occultism. So we shall have a dimensional storage actuator, which looks really cool. This is already an inventory management system, meaning that I can drop items in, I can take them out, I can craft stuff. But it has an internal inventory of 128. Therefore, we're going to make some dimensional storage. We put them like so. Now the capacity is 640. I have also made the remote. If we sneak and right click, it will be hooked up to the actuator. And that means I do have a remote. Everything goes in. And the main reason that I have done all of this is that I want to get rid of my backpack. And of course, the main main reason that I did that is that I can wear a chest plate now and put the elytra over here. It's just that I'm not sure. Do you take damage? Yeah, you do. Anyhow, since I'm a very lazy person, I also made a wormhole. We also link it, meaning that I can access my fancy backpack over here too. I can wear it on my hands. So you go out, you go in. Hello. I just wanted to mention a few points and I also have one question, which we will leave it at the end. First off, about this stable wormhole. One thing that I had no idea is that you can hopper items in. You see, we're getting hoppers inside. And the fun part is you can even hopper items out. And obviously instead of a hopper, you can use any type of item pipe, but you know, I didn't know that. This guy actually does not have a horrible recipe and I'm assuming you can actually use it as an ender chest. Not that I'm going to do that because next episode we are going to have access to ender chest because we were missing a few items, including the end fiber, which we should have it either this episode or the next one. Or at least that's what I'm assuming. How do you make liquid chorus? It's not bad. Another very important point is that I did make the changes to our armor and gear because we need to do a lot of fights today. So I needed the extra hearts and also the extra protection. I did all of that and then I realized that the pneumatic chest plate is actually not that far off. We can make it today. And by today, I mean literally right now. I'm really not going to do that at this very moment because it doesn't really add anything to us, it just looks cool, but that is an option as well. Don't get me wrong, I would have still made the remote because I like to have a very nice inventory for my wrenches and tools. You know, instead of carrying a bajillion items on you, well, you can just dump them in one chest. So now we come to the question. Um, I have a question about Tetra, if somebody can enlighten me a bit. All the good enchantments like looting, vorpal, sharpness, which I don't have, goes on the blade. The honing, which I'm also using for extra damage, also goes on the blade. So if I change my blade, all the honing is going to go away. All the enchantments are also going to go away. So what is the point of upgrading it? Because, you know, if I have to switch my blade every few episodes and then upgrade it again, then that's kind of ridiculous. Is my understanding correct or I'm doing something wrong? We need to start performing a ritual. This is going to be fun from occultism and we need to fight our first boss. Uh, he's going to be the Afrit. We need the Afrit essence in order to make the blood shard, in order to make it here for blood altar, as well as the red chalk meaning that we don't have to do this in autumn or blood magic in the undergarden. The issue is that I need to find a camel and I can't see anything. Well, I can go based on the minimap. Yeah, that's a fly. That is a roadrunner. Beep beep. I don't know why Coyote had so much problems. It was just one swing. Yes, sandstorm is gone. You would think that you should be able to find a camel in a village. I don't really think you want to know how long it took me, but we have a few. I think they're like llamas, right? I don't need to carry everyone. Who cares? I have tons of leads. So we are 1000 blocks away from home. Although just to clarify, it seems that you can summon this guy, but I'm sure whenever I want to craft this altar of birthing, there is going to be a trick to it. So I thought it would be much easier just to find camels. Don't shoot my camels. Well, to be honest with you, that wasn't really fun. I also made sure that I breed them at least once because, well, uh, we're going to sacrifice some of them. And you can breed them with dates just in case you're curious. Oh, and by the way, I found this in a chest. I didn't know you can do that. So the ritual that we want to perform is the open conjure. And well, the sacrifice is a camel. And in return, we're going to get an Afrit. So it's four archwood, one gold inlay, two runes of fire, and refined crimson. We also bound you to us, obviously. You go in. Do I have to make the sacrifice or will you take it yourself? Of course you don't take it yourself. I'll make the sacrifice. You have a ton of health. Is it because you're tamed? I sat on it by accident. Finally. Do you accept my sacrifice? No. So I'm thinking maybe the other guy was tamed and therefore it was not an acceptable sacrifice. We try again. Is it acceptable? Yes, it seems so. Hello. Yes. We have it. We got 14. That's great. 
So now that we have the Afrit's essence, it's good because we should be able to make the red shock and that is going to lift the restriction and we don't have to do occultism in autumn anymore. Also, if we manage to get a blood shard, we should be able to make blood ruins and that will help us upgrade our altar to tier 4, get the tier 4 blood orb and also lift the restriction that we have to do blood magic in the undergarden. So that's really good. But you might notice the only way that at this very moment we should be able to get a blood shard is this recipe. Meaning that we need to get into botanical brewery. The recipe for it has been changed and at this point of the game it doesn't really matter, everything has been changed. Oh and by the way, resonating gem has this recipe. It's relatively easy. And this is a sapling that I bought from the market and we should be good to go. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Actually, I just noticed something. So the reason that I said we can only do this recipe is because, well, we have access to mana glass, but we don't have access to alf glass. But as a quest reward, we get these guys. Yes, we get the flask. It actually doesn't really matter. It's going to give us two instead of one, but you know, it feels nice. I love the particle effects. Botania is the best. That took ages. Okay, so we give you the orb. You're going to give me two. That is perfect. It actually is not going to change that much. I just needed one for the blood altar. And a master blood orb is shadow steel. Ooh. So if you guys remember as a quest reward, going between dimensions is not very good, but we did manage to get a chromatic compound. We also got a few refined radiance, but we only need one shadow steel. I don't like this. Are you going to come up? Yes. Come to me. So yesterday I have not been well and this is why you're going to get this episode a bit later and you might notice a few odd things around the base. I was merely testing, it's not very important. But essentially by getting the master blood orb we should be able to make our blood altar in the overworld and I also have the red chalk so we can have occultism rituals also in the overworld. But what is our plan for the immediate future? Well, first off, we need power because our refined storage system is incredibly power hungry. So we're going to go with nitro reactors from power. It might look like a horrible recipe, but I can assure you none of them is that bad, except the nitro crystal itself, which this is the recipe for it. This is also not that bad, it just consumes a lot of power. So it's gonna take, I don't know, a bajillion years. Another thing that we have to take care of is logistics. I don't want to play in a 3x3 chunk, I like to spread out. And whenever you want to spread out, piping is no longer an option. There are many alternatives to pipes and one of them, of course, is ender storage. The problem is that in this modpack the recipe for it has been changed slightly, but it's manageable. The issue is that we need to get some end fibers, which we need the blazing fiber for it. And of course we also need that blazing fiber in order to make blazing crystals from power. Which as you guys already remember, we need it in order to make nitro crystals. So I'm assuming it's wise to start everything with blaze fiber. Blaze fiber does require blazing broad from Tinker's Construct and the way that you get it is that you just stick a few blazes inside the smeltery. And we do have a giant smeltery with blazes inside. There's actually a blaze spawner, so if I stand here, they should spawn, melt down, and we get some blazing blood. I do need a nether star in order to upgrade the spawner, but essentially, that is our system. So that takes care of the blazing blood, and ditch bulb is apparently a crop. So the only thing remaining is the mage bloom fiber, which does require something called silk fiber, which you will get it from silk moths. I already found two nests in the end, and therefore we should be able to start making a farm for these guys. Of course, you can also craft it, it's not a big deal. But now that we are making a farm for mods, I was also thinking we make it a double farm because we also need liquid cores, you know, for the end fiber. This is also not a horrible recipe, essentially we need to have a tree and we will get liquid cores. And of course, thankfully, we can buy the sapling. Great. Anyhow, let me set up something and I'll be right back. Oh, actually, I just wanted to show you. I was claiming some rewards and look what I got. Some of them are my own garbage, but essentially I did manage to get tier 4 dimensional storage and isnium which we need it in a lot of recipes, so I'm not gonna complain. And I was exploring, I did manage to find a spawner for Vindicators. So when you look at the Aether trees in the end, in its natural habitat, they're like three blocks tall. So naturally my first thought was to make a terrarium. But when you plant it in the overworld, there is a slight problem. This is too big and I have been trying this for a while, you can't get a smaller tree. Maybe we should make a bigger terrarium. One more problem, if you look at the JI, it's telling you that you will get liquid chorus from an arboreal extractor from an aether tree. And that's actually a very good ratio, it gives you like 50 millibuckets. This is a naturally grown tree, and if I put the arboreal extractor, it's literally not doing anything. I've never used arboreal extractors, but I have one over here, which is giving me latex. 
and this is also a naturally grown tree. So I don't really know what's wrong, but I like my terrarium, so I'm gonna bite. We find another solution. However, just out of extreme curiosity, do you work here? Nope, it doesn't even work here. Okay, so this is going to be our terrarium. We have two nests inside, which are going to spawn mods, and then we have miniguns who are going to shoot them down. I have a vacuum later down here with a few range upgrades so that wherever the silk falls down, it will gather it and put it inside the drawer, which is right over here. I was also planning to use some arboreal extractors in order to extract the juice, but unfortunately it doesn't really work, so we have fluid extractors. Essentially what we have to do is that we have to grow a tree, chop it down, get a bunch of garbage. Oh, it's working! Yes. Anyways, you get the idea. We put the logs inside, we extract the juice. And for the moment, we have 18 buckets. That's it, really. <laughs> There's nothing to it. And unfortunately, it's not incredibly efficient. Either I need more nests or I need to make a spawner for them. Oh, and one more thing. This is the site that the moths are going to spawn. So if you cover it, they're not going to spawn. And this is also a problem. I need to cover the roof. And by the way, the reason that we are doing this is that some of you guys were suggesting in the comments that we should start making a zoo. So it's not a zoo, but it's a start. Because I like the idea of a zoo. And this makes for a horrible zoo, because uh, I don't think in a zoo your goal is to kill the animals. You kind of have to make sure that they stay alive. Well, it's not a hyper-efficient farm, but it does work. We have 81 silk. Oh, we got another one. Nice. I think it's so nice. Anyways, I want to do some nature's aura and we need to replenish the aura in the trunk so that, you know, bad things do not happen that much. My solution with the oblivion flower didn't really work so well. There is apparently an ancient sapling which if it grows, it is going to sacrifice its leaves to replenish the aura. The reason that I wasn't making it until now is that we were missing the veiled mushroom. I did manage to find it in a dungeon in the undergarden, so I think we're good. Are we? Yes. <laughs> that was fast. So yes, some of the leaves have decayed and I'm guessing they're replenishing the aura. I was also reading the book and there seems to be easier ways as well, which we can automate. But the reason that for the moment I needed a teeny tiny bit of aura is that we need to automate this guy, the natural altar. And how are we going to do that? That is a very good question. We're going to do this with my new favorite mod. Entangled. I have been waiting for this day for a very long time. Unfortunately, every mod pack that we have played had a crazy recipe for this. You know, in all the mod 6, you need unobtainium just to get one block. Which, to be honest with you, I think it makes the block kind of redundant because if you have automations in order to get blocks and blocks of unobtainium, well, why the hell do you need this? But essentially, the way that it works is that this is like a phantom face from actually additions and we should be able to link it to a block. So we select a natural altar and then we right click on you. This works at a range of 1000 blocks, so we can even do everything that we want over here. Actually, we need some sun metal, which has to be cooked. And then let us give this guy a try. So the way that a natural altar works is that you can hopper the items in and you can hopper them out. So this is an entangled block. If I put a hopper on top and put the sun metal, that should get converted and give us the infused sun metal. Uh, the catch would be maybe it has to be chunk loaded. Yes, that was the problem. But I just came back and we should get it in the hopper. That is great for automation. And now that it's chunk loaded, it's doing it automatically. This is great because you don't have to have any garbage cabling. If you look, uh, we actually have nothing here. This block is just entangled to our entangled block and we're interacting with that block. I am going to use it for our altar as well and a ton of other automations. I have also been checking if we can make some blaze fiber using our current setup, which the answer is yes. And apparently also a skeleton died here. And that obviously means we should be able to make the blazing crystals. Oh, it needs 120,000 RF. That's a lot. But that is a quest. Thank you. So considering the fact that we need a ton of crystals in order to get a nitro reactor from power, I think this is one of the first things that we really need to automate. We don't really need to use entangled mod in order to do this, but I just want to try and see if it works, because we have bigger plans for entangled. So we are going to need a pattern grid. Power consumption is almost 9000. On a positive note, cables do not add anything. I can have a crafter. Oh, that also doesn't add anything. Oh no, it does add a bit. Just a tiny bit. And this is what I want to know. If I put the entangled block over here and link it, yes, that is the energizing orb. So let us make a pattern for it. We need one blaze honeycomb, one blaze fiber. That should give us one blazing crystal. That goes inside the crafter. 
and we put the crafter on redstone pulse. Okay, so I had to watch my own video to understand how I did that previously, but apparently what I have to do is that we have to set this guy to redstone signal locks auto crafting. And since the comparator is mainly going to have a strength of 1 or 2 and I don't have that much space here so I can't use a repeater, I'm using a redstone transmitter and a receiver from RF tools. So now if we order like 10 of them, they are getting it, very good, very good, and only one at a time, that's the point. Once it is done, it will be extracted, and we start all over. That is great. We have auto-crafting, in a very weird way. And power is also keeping up. Interesting. I am not that worried, because now that we have access to blazing crystals, we should be able to make far better solar panels. Oh, and by the way, this was just a test for the entangled block. We didn't really need to do that. I just wanted to see if it does redstone, if it does power, if it does items, and it does all of them. Considering the fact that we have a master blood orb, I did bring our alchemy table and our hellfire forge to the overworld, and we want to start making some of these blood shards, and we want to use this recipe, because it will give us 10. So I was thinking maybe we should also get a divination sigil? I just got the quest for this. Okay, so you go in, you as well. Because I need to know how much blood we have in our network, and well, this is the way. 108,000. I'm not really gonna complain. Oh, and by the way, I got this from a quest. I didn't craft it, but it's not a big deal. That should give me 10 blood shards, hopefully. Yes, very good. That means that in order to make a nitro crystal, we're almost done. We just need a nether star. There is a block from Engineer's Decor called Rebar Concrete, and this one is witherproof. It doesn't actually have a horrible recipe, you just need to mix some concrete with sand. And for some reason, we are out of sand. Well, in the system. Not in general. We also need some metal bars, and that should give us rebar concrete, and I think that's enough. And I also have a feeling that a 5x5 chamber is going to be more than enough. We just make it a bit taller so that he doesn't glitch out. Obviously at this very moment it's not going to be automatic, but we should be able to try something. So here is my novice spellbook. We shall upgrade it to mage, and this is the main reason that we started this episode by looking for amber. Oh wait a minute. This is Eternal Crystal, and I don't have anything from Autumn. I have the Fishing Rod. Yeah, one thing that I forgot is that we also need the Wilden Tribute. We're going to summon him again. Hello! Don't do anything stupid. Oh, you're gonna fly. Yes, very easy. Anyhow, here is the Archmage Spellbook. And I do need to make a few glyphs. This should be interesting. We're going to heal the Wither. Okay, let me get a few glyphs, I'll be right back. I got a few glyphs, and I did make a few spells. One of them is Vex, and one of them is a projectile for healing. Since the Wither is undead, this should kill it. The problem is that I was testing it on a few zombies, and it's not that powerful, because, well, uh, I don't have that much mana. So maybe next episode, we should focus on a teeny tiny bit of Ars Nevu. It's fun. But essentially, the idea is that we're going to hit it with healing, and he's gonna take damage. I can also summon Vexes, I guess. They do attack him. You know, with this we can actually make an automated wither farm. Not today, next episode. For the moment, I just wanted my nether star. And since we have a few skulls, we do this a few times. I guess our first use of nether star is going to be for the blazes. Cause you know, when I'm not around, they don't really spawn. That should be good. I'm far far away, let us see if they spawn. Yes, they do. I just wanted to give you a very small reminder that we're not really auto-crafting, we just have a few patterns in order to make crystals. And with that in mind, I did set up the pattern for nitro crystals, and let us see if we can order 32. It's going to be incredibly slow. Yeah, it's not even 1%. But it's fine, we're not in a hurry, because next episode we're also going to focus on our Snavu. I kind of liked it. And maybe I should have upgraded these guys. So wait a minute, I did manage to find a few rituals which seem to be really fun. Uh, it seems that we need to have an archwood. There you go. Then I did make an extra ritual brazier because we want to test something. And there is a tablet of awakening. We should get a golem or something. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hello. You're my bodyguard with weird hair. I had to wait until night time because this guy apparently attacks monsters. He's not doing a great job. But there is one more ritual that we want to perform. Disintegration. Yes, I needed some experience gems. You're gonna die, right? But this is a one-time use. So these are basically like a solidified experience from actually additions, but the main reason that I wanted it was to make a ring of discount. Uh, wait a minute, you still fight, right? The answer is no. Well, I did craft the ring and then I remembered we also have this guy. 
he's going to give me a discount as well. But one spell that I really want to have is speed. Our base is kind of big and I really want to be able to run fast and this is why we also have that garbage beacon. It's just that this spell requires a few weird stuff. Uh, we need someone's leg. Oh, we have someone's leg. It's just that that someone's leg has to be cooked. I made this system in a very weird way so you have a barrel here and then you have a barrel on the other side and you have to guess which one is going to be the output. I know, I'm a genius. So it's the leg, the beans and the berry? No, no, it's the ingot. It was actually a tier 1 spell. I don't know why it was so complicated. So I'm guessing it's self, amplified two times and extended time. And it is going to be called Lush Runner. Can I even cast it? Not enough mana. Maybe we go with amplify one? I can cast it, yes. 37 seconds. It's not that fast. Well, it is faster than I would run myself, so I'm not gonna complain. Kill them all. Okay, so it has been a decent amount of time later, and I believe this should be our third badge of the Nitro Crystals. Meaning that yes, we already have half a stack. That is great. I also went up ahead and made all the crystals. I could not make all the capacitors because, you know, it needs like 24, then 32 of these. And at the end of the day, a stack of nitro capacitors, which is quite a bit. But we do get a nitro energy cell. That is great. And the other reward was also blazing energy cell. Nice. Considering that everything is super expensive, I was also checking the rods that how much power are they going to transfer. So it seems that if you make a nitro energy rod, it can transfer 154,000 RF per tick. So you make this and you don't need any other rods. Anyhow, our main problem is going to be getting some Osiris God Shard. Also other God Shards because we need them in a bunch of crafting. Automating the duplication of God Shards is not that complicated, but getting a ton of Nebu Ore is a huge pain. I have already been to Autumn and we have 172 ores. And I was checking the JEI and it seems at this very moment, our best bet is to go with Create in order to get the most yields. So um, I made a system for it. It's nothing super complicated. It's just ore processing. And if we put 172 ores in, how many are we going to get? That's a lot. As a byproduct, we are also going to get cobblestone and uranium. Cobblestone, I'm just going to void. Oh, and washing it is very slow. Uh, can we go to 256? <laughs> These guys are consuming 2000 stress units. <laughs> Look at that thing. This is going to take a while, I'll give you the end result. So 172 is just under 3 stacks, 6 stacks would have been nice, we got 8 stacks and 4. I'm also thinking maybe I should also void the uranium cause you know, we got only 47. At the end game we are going to need millions of uranium ingots in order to make fissile fuel and antimatter so this byproduct is not even going to put a dent in our requirements. It's just wasting stress units. But with that ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.